Is space just space, or is it made of something else? In a recent paper, two physicists argue that space might be made of qubits. Does this mean that the universe is maybe a quantum computer? Let's have a look. That space, or maybe even time, might not be fundamental, but made of something else isn't a new idea. But making sense of it has turned out to be difficult. Loop quantum gravity, for example, makes up space of, well, tiny loops. But that research direction doesn't seem to be going anywhere. Then, about 10 years ago, a few people pursued the idea that space might be created from an abstract network. But that didn't go anywhere either. It's going slightly better for Stephen Wolfram's high hypergraphs in which space emerges from causal relations, but the idea is so mathematically obscure that I think physicists don't want to touch it. Possibly because every time they try, it yells back in mathematical syntax. Why even bother? Well, for one thing, who hasn't wondered what space really is? But also, according to Einstein, gravity is a property of space. So maybe the reason that we can't figure out how to quantize it is that we don't understand space. The new idea now is that space could be made of qubits. The authors of the new paper take one single qubit that has spin one half. The spin has three components. This is just a property of this spin. It has a priori nothing to do with space. What they show now is that if you measure these three spin components repeatedly, then the measurements will behave like angle measurements in flat space. It gives you flat space from nothing resembling space. So their point is that you start with this abstract qubit that has a spin, but out comes an observable quantity that behaves like it's a part of Euclidean space. And that is only from one qubit. If you were to take a whole lot of qubits and coax them into interacting with each other, quite possibly you can make up space from them entirely. They use mathematical descriptions of qubits, not physical qubits, but consider they're right and space is made of qubits. Maybe the qubits are physical. Maybe they're someone else's quantum computer. You all know I've been very critical of the simulation hypothesis, the idea that we're just little pieces of code in somebody else's computer program, but it's not because I'm against the idea in principle. It's that we don't actually have a computer program that could do it. So why are we even talking about it? Now, if you could prove that you can make everything, including space and the particles in the stand-up model from qubits, well, that would really make me think. The idea of the new paper falls neatly into a larger research theme that has been called it from qubit. The reason that you haven't heard much about it is that this has been going very slowly. Indeed, the slogan, It from Qubit, was popularized already by John Wheeler in the 1980s. Wheeler thought that what's really fundamental aren't particles or fields or space and time, but information. And that information is, of course, quantum information and carried by the qubits. Hence, it from Qubit. Not much has come out of this, but maybe the time for this idea just hasn't come yet. There's been some very interesting work which derive the standard model symmetries from interacting qubits. These ideas all have their problems, but maybe there's a grain of truth to it or a superposition of grains, each oscillating in 10 dimensions. Thinking about this sort of stuff gives me headaches, because it's not that easy to dismiss. It could be how nature really works. And suppose that space is made of qubits, and these qubits are in someone else's quantum computer. Then what are the qubits of that quantum computer made up of? Are they made of particles that are again made of qubits? Is it qubits all the way down? turtles, but with error correction. And if not, then what does it even mean for something to be real? If space and particles and forces all come out of qubit interactions, but the qubits are just information, then what's left that's actually fundamental? Is there even a need for physical stuff at all? Or is everything just a manifestation of relationships between bits of information? Well, if I'm a program in someone's quantum computer, I hope they do regular backups. So they told you that no one understands quantum physics. 
I think that's wrong. It's totally understandable. You can give it a try yourself with my quantum course on Brilliant. My course will help you understand what a wave function is and what the difference is between superpositions and entanglement. It also covers interference, the uncertainty principle and Bell's theorem. And after that, you can continue maybe with a course on quantum computing or differential equations. All courses on Brilliant have interactive visualizations and come with follow-up questions. What you see here is from from their newly updated maths courses. No matter how abstract the topic seems, Brilliant's courses have intuitive visualizations that really click into my brain. And Brilliant covers a large variety of topics in science, computer science and maths, from general scientific thinking to dedicated courses, just what I'm interested in. And they're adding new courses each month. And of course, I have a special offer for viewers of this channel. If you use my link brilliant.org slash Sabine or scan the QR code, you'll get to try out everything Brilliant has to offer for a full 30 days and you'll get 20% off the annual premium subscription. So go and check this out. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.